words. Now I want to speak to you just for a moment about thankfulness in poetry. And what I mean by thankfulness in poetry is simply this. Anytime you embark on a new study of whatever it happens to be, you, know, you go somewhere and the teacher says, good morning students, I'd like to tell you about X. And it doesn't matter, you know, it might be chemistry, or it might be, here's our new math lesson about fractions, or it might be a new book that your teacher passes out, or that your, your parent gives to you and says, we're going to read through a new book over the next few weeks. There's an initial response that you have to this subject, and I want you to think about it intentionally. Okay? So a lot of people go through life and they just think, well, I hope I like this. You know, I hope this is fun. Kind of like if you walked into a movie theater. You go into a movie theater and you sit down in the chair and you think, okay, movie, entertain me. Show me whether I like you or not. Uh, well, that's, that's not being intentional. That's just going through life and you think, well, I, I tasted it and it was sweet. I liked it. Or I tasted it and it was sour. I didn't like it. I don't want you to, to be unintentional about your study of poetry. Instead, when you come into, the, um, into learn about poetry, when you sit down and you watch this DVD or you open up your textbook and you work your way through it, I want you to realize that you can be doing something positively or negatively that will affect what sort of response you have to poetry itself. And here's what I mean. If you come in to these lessons and you think, number one, I want to learn as much as I possibly can. And number two, I'm going to like this stuff. I'm going to lean into it and have a predisposition toward favoring it. Then the benefit that you receive from it is going to be much greater than if you just sit there and think, all right, Whitling, convince me that I like this stuff. This is not the sort of movie that's here to entertain you. I want you to come and I want you to work hard and I want you to grasp as much as you can. And if you're thankful in it, the, the double benefit is that you will enjoy what you're receiving. And so I want you to think about that. Uh, a little side note for boys. Many times young boys have learned enough poetry to realize that they don't like it. And part of the reason is that the, the poetry they've been exposed to is butterflies and buttercups and it's a bunch of poetry written by sissies for sissies. And, and their reaction is, I don't want anything to do with that. You know, poetry is for little girls in dresses that are skipping through the meadow. And the last thing that a young man should want to do is that. So uh, for guys, I want you to just set some of your prejudices aside and, and look at poetry. And, and what I'll try to do is present you with some examples of poetry and have you write some of your own poetry that really goes against that, that preconceived idea that poetry is only for girls or is only for airheaded girls or is only for um, girls that don't have anything better to do than skip around and talk about butterflies and buttercups. So, um, so boys, stay with me as we talk about this and especially when we get into um, examples of war poetry or, or again when you have your own opportunity to write some poetry for other people. The content really is going to be up to you. And there are going to be boundaries that your teacher may have for you or your parent may have for you. But again, it's the sorts of things that you are interested in that are going to come out when you write your own poetry. And that will determine whether it's, uh, whether it's interesting to you or not. And so you'll really be in control of that process. Okay, second thing that we're going to cover is reading poetry. There are a few different elements.